guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. Last time we worked on the Avenue area and we've completed pretty much both sides of it now. There's only a few more segments that we need to really fulfill and then this whole strip is pretty much done to the border of Monaco. Now it's really good getting these different segments down. We worked on some of the buildings here with a little bit of a building site section beyond it. And I'll be honest, I want to move away from this area now. Not quite yet, we've got one more area that I just want to complete and then we're going to sort of dart away to a different segment of Monaco. The next section is a section I've been waiting to do for a very long time. Ever since I started working on Monaco, this particular area for some reason really took my fancy and I cannot wait to show you how well we managed to do so. The segment for today is the beach. This is the Lavotto beach and it's probably the main beach in Monaco. There are a few little smaller ones but this is the main core of the beach. And as expected it is an artificial beach but boy does it look great. It's got beautiful restaurants around it, a few clubs nearby as well. With a little diving section with these little prongs that come out as well. It is a beautiful, beautiful beach and I cannot wait to show you how I made it. Let's get into it, let's go. So to kickstart this episode, I wanted to first create the foundation for this location. And the first part, which caused a bit of difficulty to start with, was to get the off-ramp for pedestrians to get onto the beach. Now the issue I had is I wanted to raise the actual pathway down low enough so I could stick some restaurants underneath the actual walkways, underneath the road basically, such as you are um, seeing on the screen right now. And that was causing a bit of a problem because the road height wasn't quite high enough really to um, fulfill that. And I couldn't lower down the beach any further because we'd have got this nasty water effect. And it did cause some problems later on, um, but we did manage to get around it eventually. Now reading up about this beach, I always like to have a quick read about the area I'm building. And as I said earlier, it actually is an artificial beach which has been designed and you can kind of tell from the way it looks, it's not a natural looking beach construction. And interestingly enough as well, one thing that I really like the idea of, which I never knew was really a thing, is um, not typical of these sort of beaches, but there is a jellyfish mesh spread all around this beach area, protecting everyone who is bathing in the water. So that's certainly a really interesting and clever idea to add in. So you can have the joys of the beautiful sun in Monaco and also swim in the sea without the issue of uh, getting stung, which is um, certainly a bonus when you're out in the sea enjoying yourself. Now this section up here we are working on now is a little cafe section. So I wanted to try and make it look as close as possible to the real thing. Um, the issue again that we have is with being able to lay things down uh, sort of smoothly on this terrain. So I did have to do a bit of terraforming as well, using these uh, roads to try and raise up the height to get some stairs. And you can see the way that some of the uh, bridges gone, have gone down have caused a bit of a, an issue in terms of the terrain, etc. But there's always ways around it and you'll see that I use the um, staircases a bit later on to, um, to do so. And I've used a bit of my imagination in this section as well because like I said, it's difficult to replicate it as it is exactly. Um, so we've used some of these um, curbs to um, really you know, define the area. And in the end, what I did as well is use the uh, retaining walls to just create a little uh, flower bed section here to try and hide the, uh, the ugliness of this, uh, the drop of the, the, the actual terrain as well, which works quite nicely to be honest. But yes, going back to my earlier comment, I was really excited to start working on this beach. I think also it kind of reminded me a little bit of the um, City Skylines global build-off we'd done where um, we all worked on a um, beautiful beach. Well, not all of us actually, is a, you know, a defined map that I chose to go for a resort stroke beach area. And it was actually when I was building that that I was um, taking some inspiration on what we could do for the Monaco beach. Um, and yeah, it's it really fun actually to work on this build um, and I really like the idea of clipping in these um, little cafes under the road such as it is in real life but when you get to see it in your own build it really does come to life and uh, like I said there were some issues with the um, height of these buildings, I couldn't quite get it to work as I wanted to, I would have ideally liked the road to be a little bit higher um, and there are a few segments like here where we put down these cafes and restaurants. There should have really been some uh, 
buildings underneath these staircases as well but um, such is the games you know we can't always do everything we want so I've kind of just worked around that by creating a slightly larger cafe area just here another thing I did do actually off camera as well because it did become a mundane task I did do a bit of terraforming as well um, around the beach area I've started to get a lot more better I guess at terraforming um, the start of my new series which will be uh, available at some point in the next month or so um, if you've been catching my live streams I've actually been doing some in-game sort of map creation um, where I've been using terraforming tool quite a bit to really you know define the map itself and using that um, well learning from those mistakes I guess is probably a better way of saying it um, I was able to touch up the uh, Monaco Beach to get the shape that I wanted um, and to fit everything that I wanted to fit onto it obviously I've had to make a few sacrifices on the build itself and the design of the beach um, but overall I'm happy with it um, it did work out quite nicely and what I've also noticed as well on the beach is a lot of these planters just plopped around on the beach front so I've tried to replicate that with the um, planters here as well um, and basically try my best to um, replicate the layout of the beach in terms of the uh, the restaurants and how the uh, how the sort of uh, table and chairs are laid out as well so I've done that to the best of my abilities and uh, it really does look good and it also sort of tells the story of this area as well so you can see these actual shop faces you know are representing the cafes that are serving all these people on the tables and that. So that's a, a really cool feature to add. And you'll also notice I've been using the uh, Monaco walls a hell of a lot recently. And the reason for that is it's just so good just to define the location. Uh, for example, if these walls weren't here in this section, it would look a bit too open. I like the fact that the walls give it that closure and sort of tidiness to um, you know really make the area pop out. This segment was quite difficult to build to be honest I wanted to really create the uh, the look of this section um, in real life and it is a sort of a concrete walkway um, which allows obviously to keep people in and uh, I assume to also help out with the uh, the currents etc but it was really difficult to do and I had to in the end use the keys and kind of almost trick the game to make the shapes that I wanted so using the move it mod tool um, just kind of added a few extra segments and just kind of kept moving them around and eventually I was able to get this shape which is as close as possible to what it looks like in real life Monaco um, but yeah there's no real easy way of how I created those shapes it was pure luck that eventually viewed, um, due to a number of uh, movements and changes to the nose etc we was able to eventually get to that point so Difficult, but I'm glad that we made it because it does, you know, it's a really telling part of the Monaco beach here. And talking of beaches, no beach is a beach until it's got a load of towels and the occasional beach ball. So we've just plopped a few of these down with a few of the um, sunbreakers as well, just to, you know, add in the, the uh, realism to this area here. And next up was to add the restaurants to the other side of the beach. And again, you probably notice from a lot of my episodes, um, I've you know started to do this quite often in Monaco. Is uh, plot buildings underneath the roads themselves, and it is what it is in Monaco. That's how a lot of the buildings are sort of working, really. It's how they've been placed. Obviously, there's a lack of space in Monaco, so you need to fulfil every aspect, every defining space with something, and um, that's kind of why they do so. Um, this time I had to use procedure objects because unfortunately the road was too high up, uh, sorry, it was too low down versus the beach and I couldn't really lower the beach too much because then we started to get water flowing inside because we was going below the sea level which becomes a pain <laughs> when you're working on this. Um, it's something I should have probably thought about before I put, popped down the road but you know as is life you kind of build as you go and you learn from your mistakes and you make changes to adapt to them so that's what we did here um, so there was an issue 
but we was able to come across it and resolve it in the end. And I did decide in the end to stick with the um, buildings with the um, sort of umbrella bits on the front, just for that reason to sort of hide the fact that actually they should be a bit lower down into the uh, into the sand. But you can't tell so much with those because it kind of hides it away, which is uh, pretty handy. And now I'm just using the Monaco walls here to just define this section um, make it feel a bit more realistic and uh, that little gap there where you see um, the abnormal sort of gap in the road we're just going to add some planters there eventually and sort of cover that up so Monaco does sound like a bodge job doesn't it at times when we're working on it um, but I assure you it's not it's all um, calculated it's all built to the you know definition of what we want to achieve here in Monaco um, obviously the limitations of the game means that we can't do it like for like but this certainly does make things a little bit easier when you can do things like this to sort of hide away the ugliness So last episode we worked on this beautiful sort of road interchange here and I just wanted to place the other buildings on either side of it to just fill out this area and eventually what we do is we do add in the huge hotel and at first I did use the move it mod tool to drop that in but it worked fine for this segment but we needed to get some more height so what we had to do in the end is actually use procedural objects to um, accommodate that so you'll see here we've placed the building down so that will function as actually six different buildings there'll be a lot of people coming to this area but we did need to like i say hire the location of this building up it's a lot higher in real life monaco so we did so using that feature of procedure objects and you'll see that the uh, sort of planters here are in the way so we just highlighted those and sort of clip them inside the building so they're out of the way and it looked really really good i must say it's also functional in the sense of the bottom half is functional the top part obviously isn't um, and we also added in the shop to the bottom i think that really does define this and it does give it a very different look once you're able to do so now i know my episodes aren't normally episodes about some really fun procedure objects work and this is what we did with this one i didn't show a lot of it i'm sorry about that it was um one of those clips where unfortunately the camera stopped recording as I did it and it looked so good I couldn't go back and do it again. So we used procedure objects there to morph the shape of these buildings to try and create the look of what it is in real life Monaco. So again, procedure objects really did help that. It's not functional, but we can get around that as we know from last episode. So the building we're working on at the moment is the Lemudian. Uh, which is a hotel sort of restaurant area um, and the one next door to it is the um, the beach plaza beach plaza version of that so together i believe they are one hotel um we do two different segments on there so we're going to try and replicate that we've got the beach in front of us nicely we've also got the fancy swimming pool we can't quite replicate it exactly as it is in real life because well the swimming pool is a very nice curved look so unfortunately we can't do that but these ones from um, King Leno work perfectly well so we'll be able to put that down there not quite the same shape and it does kind of change the look of this hotel a little bit but like I said it just reminded me very much of the, um, the global build off this build because I was able to be a bit more creative and uh, use what I learned in that particular build into this um, and I was really pleased with how the global build off came out so Hopefully you guys also enjoy how this looks. And talking of enjoyment, I'm hoping that you're really also enjoying my recent live streams. I've been doing quite a lot, almost three a week at the moment. I know it's not a huge amount, but bearing in mind I used to do one a month or one every three months to be fair. Um, really enjoying it, I must say. I've really enjoyed the, uh, the comments from everyone in the um, chat as we build along and obviously the advice and uh, tips that I've been, giving, been given even are really, really good. And also it's really helped me build up a much better collection for the new series. 
Um, and if you're not aware of this new series, it is a series based on the UK. So yes, we're going to be going back to my roots um, and building a island in England, very south. It's actually built and based upon the Isle of Wight. So if you are a UK resident or you live on the Isle of Wight, let me know your thoughts on that. And if you haven't already, check out the recent live streams of the map creation because I'm building the Isle of Wight map as close as possible to what it looks like in real life. The build itself will probably be a little bit different. I'm not gonna restrict myself as I did in Monaco. Um, so there will be a bit more flair involved in that, but I'm gonna try and keep the, the area looking as similar as possible, just because it's a location very close to my heart and I will probably end up building it as I remember it, as I you know see it on Google Maps anyway. But we'll see how that goes. But hit me up in the comment section below if you've been enjoying those live streams. And also, let me know if you want to see some more Monaco live streams as well, because I can switch between the two, of course. There's no reason why I should do one more so than the other. Um, Monaco, obviously, I think we're going to be sticking to a two to three week cycle. Um, and hopefully the new series will pop in in between that. I'm not promising anything just yet because I'm not too sure on my time allowances as of right now. But I really am, like I say, I really am enjoying doing these live streams. And um, yeah, it's really good to have you all involved. So keep an eye out on both um, YouTube and Twitch for my next live stream. But anyway, back to the build. We're getting very close now to the end of this episode. We are now just detailing the um, Hotel Plaza Beach area. Um, again, using the Monaco walls, which, you know, as I said earlier, really do help make this area pop, which is perfect. Um, and yes, I'm going to pretty much leave it here, to be fair, guys. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this beach. It's um, certainly been an enjoyable one for me. I have really, really enjoyed building this. It's, again, it's been something very different in Monaco. And uh, going back to my original comments of why I built Monaco, it's because of the different varieties of areas to build upon as well. Like, you know, a few weeks back, we was building a Japanese garden. Uh, not something you would imagine building randomly if you was going to be replicating somewhere, but that's the advantages of Monaco. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you want to keep in touch closer, follow me on my social medias popping up on the bottom of the screen now. Other than that, have a great one, and I'll catch you all again. Thanks for watching, and all the best.